Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Undisrupted. Adam, I had a debate the other day with a good friend of ours. We know Brianna Hodges. She and I were talking about the fact that she thinks that the in-person conference will never happen again in, in, in its true form. Teachers will no longer go because administrators have realized like, wow, there's a lot of sub costs, all the extra costs. We'll just send them virtually. Now that we've lived this virtual world for over a year, they've decided that we'll never have to have these in-person conferences again. What are your thoughts on that? Unfortunately, I think teachers will be the ones that suffer from this because the people who are writing the checks are still probably going to be the ones mm -hmm. who think they need to go to Orlando or Vegas for that uh, conference. But, you know, that regular classroom teacher that wanted to get out of their get out of their classroom and go to this conference, then that, the principal is going to be like, well, can you do it virtually? Um, that kind of stuff. I see more I see more of that happening, which is double-edged sword yes now more teachers probably can go to a conference that couldn't go because the virtual option is a thing but there's more there's something to be said from that in-person conference we've had this conversation before virtual's okay is but it's not a substitute for the real thing you know ain't yeah. that like the real thing ain't baby. nothing like the real thing baby yeah and i think you're right i think it's going to be the the teachers that suffer in that realm i i don't i see a lot of administrators still eye, eyeballing that conference in portland or that one in you know wherever they, Vegas, uh, baby. The Azores. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Vegas. Uh, but it's interesting that we bring this up because I'd like to welcome in our guest. This is Matt Holly. Um, and Matt's going to join us. He's joining us all the way from Lubbock Cooper, right down the road, not right down the road, but sort of down the road from us here uh, in Austin. Um, you can follow Matt at LCISD. That's Lubbock Cooper ISD. LCISD Matt on the Twitters. And I see, uh, Matt, you have an interesting uh, background there, then you may have uh, actually some say in this debate. Uh, what's your thoughts, first of all, on the the whole in-conference, non-conference? Because I got the, the pleasure of experiencing your event last year. Yes, June, during COVID, in person. Uh, tell us about tell us about your event and then what are your thoughts are about the whole conference experience? So um, I always joke about this, that basically I was a uh, spy at uh, Carl's events in the past. <laughs> and took notes and everything and said hey we need to do something like that in lubbock texas we need we need more of a this huge vibe big conference but still have that boutique feel to where you can kind of shape it to whatever you want it to be and food trucks and bands and all those fun things so kind of took some of uh some of carl's ideas there and turned around and, and brought them to lubbock and yes <clears throat> in june we had a in-person conference uh, and it was hybrid. Wow. And so what I did is I turned around and had uh, iPads set up to, to stream Zoom feeds out to the people that were at home. Uh, we used really big rooms for the sessions. Uh, so chairs could be really far apart, something like a band hall, choir rooms, things like that, and spread everything out. And then as people would get up, I actually even picked rooms that had two doors so I could make an entrance and an exit so that people weren't going through the same doors trying to go in and out. Uh, and then also had the real cool sprayer to where they would go and spray the seats and doorknobs and all those things. And so they were going in and doing that in between. Um, and then food trucks. The food trucks are actually one of the best, what I've seen now through, through the COVID pause, if we wanna call it that. Um, food trucks have done such a great job um, and, and basically providing food for people and providing that social part of what we have missed through a lot of this. We still kind of get that as we were picking up food and ordering and all of that, and people were outside so they could spread out, um, all of that. And, and I think going back to kind of what you are talking about debate wise, yes, we can do some things uh, online. Uh, there's a guy that I've worked with in the past and he, he basically says, you don't call it virtual because virtual means it's not real, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And okay. so he's saying, you know, kind of doing online, doing those things. But again, you can't build a relationship. You can't, uh, you know, we talk a lot about energy and momentum and things like that. And a lot of times that is tough working through a camera and a microphone. Um, one thing that I did notice uh, at our event last year was having, you know, some people out in the crowd and then also having the online attendees, the chat rooms were vibrant. Yeah, People were asking questions and they were talking to one another. And so that was a part that I saw that I was like, hey, that's actually really cool. 
and it may not happen all the time. We talk about the kids back in the corner, they're introverts or don't want to uh, be out in front of everyone. Uh, and I think it kind of gave some of those people that chance as well to have to have some voice and conversation and not be in the forefront of like, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of all this. I'm not going to ask a question in the middle of, you know, 30 people in an event and all these things. So I think it gave an opportunity for some of those people to do it. And so it is now kind of coming back full circle. It is something that I think is going to stay. I think it, the hybrid way of the world is, is, is the right way to do it because there are going to be some people that are on vacation, right? have to take care of kids, can't child have childcare. Care. You know, some of those things to where they can still participate. Um, and, and in the event, I actually put people in as moderators for each of the rooms. And so as people are talking, if there is a question that comes sourced from the crowd, that moderator can ask it live to the person presenting when it's coming from online. And so even with that, it just created a different dynamic that I do think is advantageous to everybody now. But as we know, that energy, that vibe, all of those things that we get from an in-person event, you know, we still have to have some of that. I think we still have to have those connections and stuff like that. Cause I mean, coming to your events, I mean, I met a whole new group of people of like-minded people, um, you know, that are now I'm bringing in into Lubbock, Texas, you know, and, <laughs> and, and I think that's a, I think that's a big thing. We, we were, we're on an Island, but we're not on an Island out here. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've, we've definitely become a hub for the area. Uh, when we went virtual, people were coming to us, Hey, how are you doing things? What are you doing? How are you going to do this stuff? And, and so having that, uh, is good and, and no offense to Austin, but man, it's expensive to attend an <laughs> event in Austin. Um, you know, and, and we love it and it's fun and it's really cool going, you know, and running around and seeing Austin and doing all that stuff. We love it. But some of the districts, they just, they simply can't afford to send mm -hmm. uh, a staff to that. Yeah. And so with yeah. having it here um, and it's free, our events completely 100% free. Um, and so making that we can actually support some of the surrounding uh, districts to where they can come to us and they can see this, this level of PD, this level of fun and, and hanging out. And so I, I think it's an important thing. I think it's huge for this area. Um, and it's, it gets bigger every year. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, as you know. I mean, and, you said my uh, favorite price. I mean, free 99. <laughs> Folks who know me know I'm all for the free 99. Free 99. Um, but I mean, Absolutely. the thing that you mentioned about having a moderator really is an important component. Carl and I, um, we took part of a session during ISTE and it was three of us uh, that we presented in there. And the great thing about it, the third person who wasn't up or whatever at that time kind of served as that impromptu moderator to work the crowd, if you will, and kind of egg people on to do things. And when something came up in the chat, it, that made it all the difference. If you don't have that person reading it, because it's really hard to do this whole virtual presentation thing and also see what people are saying and change course or go to it. So you almost have to have that component where you are seeing what's happening in that virtual space to have that engagement because it does become, I'm talking to a screen unless you know what's going on in that audience. And then you're like, Oh my gosh, this is the worst. So you definitely have to have that, that, that person there. So I do think there are some components that hopefully we keep moving forward with the conferences um, but like you said, nothing be face to face. I, I'll add to that. I think after Matt's event, um, you know, I was able to do one of the, I was one of the speakers up on stage, but I, at, at little intermissions, I would have the audience kind of have a discussion. I would run up to the chat and just see what people were saying. And I was like, man, this is a really neat as a speaker to really get a vibe as to what the audience is saying. And I remember we used to have a thing called today's meet. You remember that it was like a running back mm -hmm. channel that when it, it's now no, no longer around, but I was like, how do we keep that? That's a cool component. I would love in my future sessions that they're in person, I would love to have some sort of back channel, not necessarily interrupt me while I'm in the middle of whatever, but when there's little two minute or three minute breaks, like I do in a lot of my talks, I can go over and see like what people in the audience are actually thinking or saying, whether they be in person or virtual, like some sort of back channel. I have to figure out a new tool because like I said, today's meet is no longer around. I'll have to find some sort of back channel thread thing that we could use. And I'm I know sure in Google, uh, in Google slides, in that presenter view, there's actually a URL that you can give out to where they can ask questions and it just shows up on your screen. It doesn't show up on a projector or TV. Oh, okay. So that, Maybe I'll use that. There's there's a little piece back and hidden back in there that, that's available too. So 
Very cool. So I hope they can flesh it out a little bit more. So like with all the changes that we've had, you know, there's been, there's been a, there's been a lot of things that happened since we've all been in the same room together. Um, what do you think there, there are things that have happened that schools can see, you know, all these different things that happened, uh, it kind of highlighted some of the, the deficiencies that school systems have. What do you think are some of those things that were that are highlighted because of that that we need to work on moving forward? I, I think that I think one, it really highlighted again, I say this all the time. I think it highlighted relationships. Uh, a lot I heard so many times that you know there's there's a virtual meeting, you know, with the kids coming together and and fifteen to twenty minutes are them just talking about what's going on. and and I think, when when the whole COVID thing went down, I think it took away that part that we didn't really even know was that. I mean, we know it's important, but we didn't realize how much of that stuff happens naturally in a classroom, naturally when the kids are having lunch and all that stuff. And so kind of hearing the, that part of it, I think it really highlighted it. I also think that there's uh, teachers now that we have We've been talking to them about setting up, you know, making a digital classroom to share content and things like that. Um, I think we have a lot of those teachers ears that we did not have in the past. And so they're like, oh, cool, you've got some tools that can really help me. And then um, student engagement, I think, I think we realize how important student engagement is to learning now, because it can't simply be a deal to where we just push out an assignment that has instructions at the top fill that stuff out and then go turn it in. Um, it, it doesn't happen that way. Um, you know, we, we talk about student centered, uh, learning, we talk about project based learning, but we also have to talk about the human aspect of pushing that forward. And it, and it often can't happen without the relationships being built. Um, and then also that engaging lesson. We had a, a teacher here at the high school that made a lesson the other day that I'd like to share just super quick where they've been, they've been reading, they've been doing uh, all of their stuff. And she had a food truck fair to where basically the kids took passages and things that they read and created a menu that had to do with the book they read. And then they also designed food trucks that pertain to the book they read. And so like, what a great way to prove your knowledge and something that's, that's very cool. current yeah. um, of, of the food, food truck culture and all of those things. And it was just such a dynamic way to do it. We have another teacher that teaches forensics and she actually sets up a crime scene in her room and she uses detergent, like liquid detergent and with black lights, liquid detergent, like all of a sudden has this like iridescent quality to it yeah. to where it looks like blood yeah on bottle, bodily on fluids and yes like that. yeah and so they're walking through with black lights and keeping track and there's tags and so they they're actually doing the deal where they tag an area where they think something happened and all that and the lights are off in the room and she's taking them in in small groups i mean just such cool engaging things and and sometimes those things are somewhat difficult to do when you don't have kids there yeah. with you and I think that really, uh, to your point, highlighted what teachers were, were doing because we all have set in countless digital meetings, Zoom meetings, Google Hangouts, whatever you want to call it. And so teachers felt that overload from like, oh, my, I have to send another Zoom meeting, I'm on the screen. So if you hated being in that meeting because it was so dry, I think it also highlighted for teachers I need to do a better job with my kids because I'm bored of taking all these meetings I have to sit in. So I need to do a better job of delivering content to my students. And then it's, and then it's, you know, topping on the phone, kind of what Carl's talking yeah. about with like a back channel, everybody's messaging one another <laughs> back and forth, you know, behind the scenes of oh what's gosh, going on yeah. and stuff like that. And you can see them, they look to the side and obviously I'm texting a little something and I'm back. And, and they're so, smirking. There's the smirk know, too. They're like, mm, something just funny. Somebody just said something funny about me in the chat. I know it because <laughs> like three kids are smirking now or three That's adults. That's the funniest are... look. Cause we've yeah. all done it in face to face meetings, but also like in zoom meetings, you'll type yeah. of something funny and then you're looking at their little box to see yeah. what they get it. <laughs> yes, it is. You want to see them react to it. 
Now, I'm, but now I'm thinking <laughs> now with the food truck thing. I love that idea. Adam, what would be the undisrupted food truck? What would be in the undisrupted food truck in terms of food? <laughs> It'd definitely be spicy wings. Yeah. I mean, we hot wings, hot wings, <laughs> yeah. which by the way, Matt last year did the hot pepper challenge at the end of, uh, at uh, confluence. And so we, that was, you want to try, we try to do the podcast that way, Adam, uh, you want to try to try doing that up on stage when you're, <laughs> you got to talk for three minutes after eating a habanero or sort of eating one <laughs> in my case, uh -uh. Uh -uh. I know I did the, I did the WWE bite and switch. It looked like I ate it, but I didn't. I just kind of took a nibble off and threw it in the trash. Um, Carl, Carl had a flight the next day, or had no? You had to. Did I had to fly? drive to isolate. You had, had to I, drive. Had That's right. And yeah. then self quarantine. And he was like, "I'm not going to make myself quarantine miserable after eating this habanero." <laughs> no. So six <laughs> hours in the middle of nowhere, Texas, driving my truck, and I was like, "There, I there's no gas station or restroom for for hours." I was like, "Yeah, this is not going to end well." So I just kind of, I, I took a feel path. The heat. Yeah, I felt the heat. But it's not in my mouth. Uh, so <laughs> pivoting a little bit. Yeah, pivoting a little bit. Speaking of some heat, we're we're uh, you know you're an emerging technology. I mean, that's a great title, emerging technology coordinator. Um, so we're about to be, and I've asked, we're going to be asking a lot of our guests about this this year because we're about to be flush with cash in schools. You know, ESSER funds are coming. You've got the ARPA stuff coming in. You know, billions of dollars coming to your schools to be spent for learning loss or 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 what kind of whatever emerging tech. I mean, as it were. So. What do you think it, uh, would be the best use of those funds for schools? Like in your area, when you think about your schools or your area specifically, like what are some things like, oh, well, if we get this much money, we should invest it in these things or this thing? Um, I think I think connectivity at home is a, is a bigger issue than what a lot of people realize. Um, and, and also even past that, in being in some, having some rural areas it doesn't matter if you have a hot spot. Yeah. Like the cell phone signal itself is is not great. And so uh, you know, recently Elon Musk with the satellites to provide the internet and all that stuff. I think some of that stuff is it, I really think you're gonna have to spend some of that that money locally on some connectivity, whether it's whether it's going through uh Elon's company, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um Skylink, no, maybe something Whatever like that. Whatever it is, it sounds Sky, like something that's uh, Skynet. From a James Bond. Skynet. <laughs> I think he's, so, a, you he's know, a James Bond likes... villain. I'm sorry. He's a James Bond villain. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> he just doesn't know it yet. But, yes. <laughs> so, you know, I think some stuff like that to where uh, that connectivity, because uh, in our districts, we're we're one to one. Luckily, we did one to one before we knew we uh, were going to have a pandemic and, and need to have that ability. So we were already in that world um but i think connectivity is a big deal um i also think uh basically the refresh you know to where some of that equipment's starting to get old and so i think you're gonna have to refresh some things uh with those funds um but a number one for me is connectivity uh to where you know everybody gets that fair shake on on being able to do some things at home and and uh do some work and you know, even to a point to where there were, there was someone the other day that uh, they were needing to apply for a job and on their, on their deal, it was, it was blocked. It was blocked on the, on the deal because it was a movie theater. Mm -hmm. oh. right? So they want to apply to movie theater to apply for a job, but the internet's filtered to where you can't get to a movie theater. Interesting. Yeah. And so we turn around and set up a little temporary hotspot that I had set it up and they were able to apply for a job at a movie theater. So, you know, some of that stuff of having that access and then having the people around uh, to where they can assist on some of those little one off things that, you know, makes a big deal for kids. And I think that's where we've got to really stay focused that this is for um, student growth. It's for, uh, you know, them to, to show their knowledge, find new ways to, to show knowledge. And, and being an emer emerging technology coordinator, I'm all constantly trying to find whatever that next best thing is, vet it and see if it's good. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's terrible. And, and so I think, again, having that, that circle of people that you trust and that you have conversations with and you built relationships with, talking about them about how to spend these monies, having these conversations just like this. You know, I know that Carl came to town one, uh, once and I showed him a, my little nebula projector. Oh. And I think he bought it on the plane <laughs> on the way home, you know, and, and some of those things, that's how that happens. Yeah. It happens organically. And, and I think you have to have the conversations about what's wonderful and what's not on, on doing this. Cause it is going to be an influx of money. And, yeah. and I think, 
I think connectivity is my my deal. Those are, and the biggest thing is, and listeners of the podcast have heard me say this before: hotspots are narcotic. I mean, they're like a pain uh, killer. the The issue is still, you know, to the home. And as you said, the hotspots become cold spots if you don't have the connectivity there. Where I'm at, I have an entire county that I'm the technology director for. So we have spots where there's one house every couple of miles. And so they don't have the fiber that runs home to home and they don't have the cellular towers out there. So I can give them AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint, Metro PCS, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're not going to have it's not going to work there. So we have to fix that. And it's not hotspots. Hotspots is the, you know, it gets them, it, it takes Temporary. the edge off, but we need something that's going to go to every single house um, that has to be. And I think our FCC is, is on board now to really finish that last mile and get us where we need it. Cause that, that is something to your point, connectivity goes to healthcare. Now, if, if you want to see your doctor, they don't want you to come in the office. Even now you get on your cell phone and do a virtual visit. And then they decide whether or not you can come in. And so to your point, not even jobs, you're talking about my health is not yeah. determined about connectivity. Yeah. And, it, I think that- it, it, and it changes. I think it needs to be, you know, as we know, it needs to be a utility. It, I think it's that important now that it needs to become a utility of some sort of, you know, it, it just, I think it has to be. I will say this, that Matt is my personal emerging technology coordinator as well, because as he mentioned that with the uh, Nebula, I, he's my, before this call, we were already comparing notes on microphones and cameras and whatnot. And I do think that's important. I think you need to have someone like you or someone in a similar position, um, because when these funds come in, I think the biggest misconception out there in the public is that we're just going to blow it on a bunch of stuff um, that are going to, it's going to be kind of these, you need someone that's vetting those resources and vetting those things. And a little quick word about that Nebula projector. Yeah, I bought it. And I took it and then I was consulting with the district and a teacher saw it and a light bulb moment went off. And that teacher said, you know what? I've always wanted to have like four different things happening in my classroom, but I can't afford to have like four big monitors or any of that stuff. He's like, how much are those? And I told him, and he's like, this is perfect. So he, he has little Chromebooks and he just had each kid, they had little whiteboards and they project. And all of a sudden he's got a mobile classroom with four different projectors for sub a thousand bucks. And I was like, that's, that was pretty, I mean, I wouldn't have thought of that, but I mean, this guy did. And I was like, you know, that's coming from an, one simple idea of like, how about this and what can we do with it? And then giving some teachers, those that are the innovative ones, at least some space out there to just to explore, or even the ones that aren't and just say like, do you think you, this would be useful in your classroom? And some teachers may look at it and go, wow, that's a resource I never thought about before to reach kids in different ways. Or, or as you say, have kids show different ways to demonstrate their knowledge, which I think is what he's using it for that teacher that I mentioned. So um, you shared a- that with a bunch of folks in Georgia. Uh, when you came here, we were in the hotel lobby and we found a, a hallway oh, yeah. and you pulled out. <laughs> I pulled out the nebula and we went, we, we did an ed tech poetry slam right there. We, we reviewed it, I believe. And people were like, yeah. what is this thing? And I was like, Oh, let me tell you. And all of a sudden I was the expert. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you're listening to the guy who I got that idea from. So we do borrow each other's ideas a lot of bit, but I figure like we owe each other a couple. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm still always, he is mad as my go-to. I call, I'll text him and say, what's the newest, latest thing? I was asking, what was those cameras we were talking about too? Because we were looking at getting, like, this is silly, but, but our swim team wants to do a virtual swim meets. And I was like, I wish there was a way we could have like a little camera that connected straight to Zoom where I didn't have to use people's cell phones and whatnot. What was that camera you talked about? Was it Wemo? Mevo? Yeah, Wevo. Mevo yeah. cam, M-E-V-O. Yeah. Yeah. And it connects Amazing. straight to straight to Zoom, boom, you're in and you don't have to worry about having people's cell phones or iPads up on, you know, think where there's water and whatnot. So I would just have that thing kind of up on a tripod. So anyway, uh, all that to say, yes, you got to have got to have a mat in your life. <laughs> that, that, that's his new uh, motto now. Just put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some post production on that? Uh, yeah. Got to have a mat on your life. It just comes across the screen. <laughs> So I think having a mat in your life is, is something that's really good. But if, if everybody could, can't get a mat in their life, what is something, um, Matt, that you recommend that all of our listeners can do to keep them undisrupted in their personal life, in their work life in this year? Because this has been local or something crazy and we are getting back to normal. If And I'm putting the air quotes right now for everybody who's uh, listening but what is something that you recommend that we can take from all of this to keep us undisrupted moving forward? I think, I think we have to realize uh, who our core people are. And, and, and again, it's, it just, it all goes back to relationships with me. Um, I think you start realizing who, who you, who you can trust, who you can go to, who are your go-tos on stuff. And then 
really making sure you're supporting those people that rely on you too. Um, I think, I think through all of that, I mean, we, we're finding ways to do things that we never realized ever that we needed to do. Like we never realized that I needed virtual backgrounds in a Zoom meeting, you know, and then you saw the first person do it and then it spreads and, and Carl was there. I, one of the themes of Confluence one year was skateboarding, which is really random, but the whole skateboarding culture is a whole lot like teacher culture. You're, you're going out, you, you know, the classroom could be the skate park and you see somebody do a trick. And so then you see, oh man, I want to try that. I want to do that trick. And so you practice and practice and practice, and then you pull it off. And that original person has to realize that it is for the growth of everybody that somebody else learned their trick. You can't be offended that somebody else learned it. And then you can't be offended when somebody else learns it and then improves it. That's right. And so that's education to me. We're all borrowing from one another. We're all building those relationships. And as long as we're all pulling in the same direction, then I'm not offended when somebody you know, takes an idea. Luckily, Carl's not offended that I stole a lot of his ideas for Confluence from his event, you know, and, and then, you know, that deal, that's how we roll. That's how we do things. And so having that path all the way through to where we're borrowing and stealing and improving, and then it up makes me up my game because then I saw somebody do something that I did and made it better and all that. And we just keep rising and rising and rising. And you can kind of tell from our logo we got that mount kind of miami vice thing this year and and the idea is is how do we get teachers excited planning a lesson and implementing a lesson like what we do planning a vacation because when we plan a vacation we go through all those steps and we research and we want to make sure everything's right and then you have that chance to show off that lesson and it's kind of that deal again to where okay i'm borrowing i'm building i've I found other teachers and here we go and so taking that stuff forward, I mean, I think that's what's huge is we've got to get back in that game of making these engaging lessons um, and be excited about it. And, and so some of this virtual pause on everything, people aren't as excited as they were. And so I may have gone, you know, kind of gone off the path of your question, but because I, I can, now. I can definitely do that. But I, I, just um, see you I think that's a big deal when I come down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there I'll, you take, go. I'll, I'll take that vacation thing one step further because i think the other thing that you hit on that um with the skateboarding analogy but also with the idea of the vacation is we need to also after we learn those new things and plan and prep and create those new exciting lessons we need to share them because i think when you go on vacation there's pictures of people's feet at the beach there's the food that they ate let's get let's figure out a way to snapshot a moment in time of those lessons that we're creating and then share those out you know instagram twitter whatever so that other people can learn from it and get excited about it just like when you see that person like oh where's that beach that you're at or what's that food that you're eating and you know it's like that gets you excited. So if teachers can see that excitement um, and sharing that, I think that's, that's kind of the next level of what you're talking about. I mean, that's what needs to be happening. Well, his name is Matt Holly, everybody. He is the Emerging Technology Coordinator at Lovett Cooper ISD. You can follow him at LCISD Matt on Twitter. Uh, his new tagline is relationships Matt or matter. That's right. Uh, Got the I Matt like in that. there, right? Yes. Relationships matter with Matt. Uh, thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, again, listeners out there, be sure to subscribe. Give us a review. We'd appreciate it. Might even give you a shout out on a future show. This, of course, has been the Undisrupted Podcast brought to you by Future Ready Schools. He's Adam, and you can follow him at Ask Adam 3 And he's Carl, and you can follow him at Mr. Hooker. And remember, we are better together. And we are better. Undisrupted. undisrupted. And relationships matter. This podcast is made possible by the generous support of Amazon Web Services.